Rav Basu Daf Kuf Tes Zayin Umud Aleph Living Life Kashe Ani Yut Yoter Mechamishim Makot This is in a way a continuation of the Matmonim Shir on Daf Kuf Yud that we had where we learned about uh, Rami Dikulo and we learned about Rabbi Pinchas Ben Yoye who never wished to take anything from anybody else on the principle of a Sonei Matanot Yichye one who despises gifts one who despises handouts is alive, and, and what that really means. So today's piece of Gomorrah is based on two psukim in, in Eyuv. You've heard people say very often when a person goes through a, a, a financial loss, has a bad business cycle, and people say, you know what, at the end of the day, it's only money. You've got health, Baruch Hashem, if you've got health, that's all, that's all you really need. Well, Gomorrah doesn't seem to agree. And sometimes we've got to understand the Gomorrah and, and, and align to it. It's based on two psukim in Eiv. Eiv says to his friends, Chanuni, Chanuni atem re'ai. Friends, get off my back. Leave me alone a little bit. Just stop pestering me. Ki yad agabi. The hand of God has struck me. I've had a terrible time. I've suffered terrible losses and tragedies. Just give me a break. They answer him and say, Hishamer al tefen elavin. Be careful not to have tainas against the ribbonu shalom. Ki al ze bacharta meoni. Because you chose these kind of tragedies more rather than poverty. Says Rabbi Pinchas ben Chama in Al Gemara. There are a number of different memories of life insights by Rabbi Pinchas ben Chama who was a, a, an Amora who lived first in Bovel and then went to, to Eretz Israel. And, uh, and he writes, says, Kashe aniyut betoch beito shel adam yoter mechamishim makot. It's worse to have poverty in your home than the 50 makot that Mitzrayim suffered. And the Ramban ek- explains, Hainu chamishim makot, sharei be Mitzrayim, dichtiv be etzba elokimu. And Mitzrayim, it says, it's the finger of Hashem, similar to the piece that we have in the Haggadah. Uh, that was ten makot. And Eiv says, Yad Hashem, the hand of Hashem, not just the finger of Hashem. The finger of Hashem is ten makot. This is the hand of Hashem. This is fifty makot. So think of the ten makot that, that Mitzrayim got, including makas bechayros. Multiply that by five, and Rabbi Pinchas ben Chama says poverty is worse than that. Says the Rashbam, Don't question Hashem. There are people who are in worse conditions than you. You've just had these 50 tragedies. You've had 50 terrible tragedies. There's some people who've got worse. Because you're fortunate, at least you've got money. You've got all these other terrible tragedies that have happened to you, but you've got money. So the Rebbein Shalom is showing you mercy. More so than many others who are, who are poor. At least you've got money. It's exactly the opposite of what everybody says. Everybody says, at least you've got good health. And Rabbi, Pin, and Rabbi Pinchas Ben Chama says... At least you got money. Who cares about your health? At least you got money. It doesn't seem to make sense. What is he trying to teach us? What is he telling us? Says the Maharal in his Nasiv on Yisurin, Mipnei ki ha-he'eder hu achisaron shelechem bufar nasa hu keneged akol. Lack. That means lack of food and, and panosa. If one hasn't got panasa, one hasn't got what to eat and feed one's family, is worse than anything. Because other tragedies are limited. You've got a, whatever it is, God forbid, a person has cancer. Okay, it's cancer, that's what it is. That's pretty bad. A person loses a child, chas Okay, but he's just lost a child, that's it. What does the maral mean? But poverty is like death. There's no virtue in poverty. Not only is there no virtue in, in poverty, but Poverty is like death. Because death means absence of life. All other tragedies, you're still alive. 
So what you could say to somebody who's suffering terrible loss, as for sure, is to say, but at least you're alive. Not at least you're healthy. Maybe they aren't healthy. At least you're alive. You've got life. But you can't say that to somebody who hasn't got money. You can't say at least you're alive. That's not a life. Such an interesting idea, the Torah that is so full of Ruchnius and Kedusha and Torah to say something which seems so material. It, 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 without money, it's not a life. So that's what Rabbi Pinchas ben Chama is teaching us, and that's what the Maharal explains. It's still very difficult to understand. So to get a little bit more clarity, we look at Rashi on the Posuk in Eiv, and Rashi on the Posuk in Eiv says, Ki ala yusurin halalu yesh livchor yoter mi aniyut. It doesn't mean you have chosen this Eiv, it means you ought to choose all your other tragedies rather than poverty, and you're fortunate you don't have poverty. Adam, why? Adam shenahagu bo kavod. Because if a person has had COVID, says Rashi, we're talking here not about poverty. If a person's always been poor, a person's always been poor, he gets used to it. But a person who used to be rich and has become poor, that's what we're talking about. That's no life. Man, they all used to honor him. He used to think they honored him because they respected him. They didn't realize they honored him because they respected his money. And then his money's gone and all of a sudden he's a nobody. He used to get uh, shlishi in shul, now he doesn't even get gelile in shul. He, he, people would uh, come and talk to him, now nobody, nobody talks to him. And he realizes, I'm the same person, why is nobody talking to me? So they never, they never respected me, they respected my money. The lamud ba'osher kol yamavi was accustomed to wealth all his days. The yamod ala mekach, ve'en lo damim. And now he walks down the street and he sees things in the store and he can't even go in because he can't afford anything. He goes into the supermarket, he sees all the beautiful fruits and vegetables he can't buy. He sees all the different products he can't buy. He walks past a clothing shop, he would like to get something for his child or for his wife, he can't do it. Uvosh, he feels embarrassed, he feels ashamed. And he returns home destroyed, destroyed. Just uh, to totally broken. He's a broken person. That's what it's talking about, the Misa. Somebody who used to have wealth and recognition and honor, and now he's got nothing, it's all gone. Says the Marsha. But notice it says, Betoch Beito. Why does Rabbi Pinchas ben Chama say, Kashe Aniyut Betoch Beito Shel Adam Adam Yotel? Why didn't you say Kashe Aniyut? Poverty is worse. What's the Betoch Beito? In a person's home, what does that mean? Maybe other people are supporting him. What happens if he has nothing in his home, but other people are supporting him? It's not about not having money. A big chidush in the marshal. It's not just about not having money. Maybe you've got money. The community is taking care of you. They were the chiv tzdoka. They realized you were wealthy. And they're keeping, like the Hilchus Tzedakah, they're restoring you to your prior wealth. So now you can go into the store and you can buy what you want because the community is taken care, made sure that you're okay. All the years you were wealthy, you took care of others, the community is now taking care of you. What, what now? Says the Mashal, that's still worse than death. Why? It's still worse than the 50 Makkas. Why? Because Tluyim Ba'achirim, your dependence, after a lifetime of independence, you're now dependent. And that's worse than 50 makos. In the Shir and Afkufyud, I told you about the Scandinavians, the Norwegians, and they told me they would rather die than, than take handouts from the state, than, than take social security from the state. Everybody wants to be productive. That's the, that's the culture there. The Jewish culture is the same and even more so. To be productive, to be independent, not to be dependent on other people. That's a Jewish middle. Being dependent, so the Mashor has now developed the idea a little bit further even than Rashi. Rashi talks about a person who was wealthy and is no longer wealthy. The Mashor says, and even if he's still wealthy, but it's not his money, he's being given a handout. That's still bad. Why? explains the Maharal in the Gurarias. And now we go to the Maharal in Pashas. A poor person has no independent chayus. Chayus, I always translate chayus as aliveness. I know there's no such word. 
but you know what I mean. It's not life. A dog has got life. Uh, a rose has got life. Uh, a, a, every human being has got, that's not what, that's not what chayus means. Chayus means aliveness. Chayus is that when you see this person, you're inspired by their energy. That's what chayus is. Chayus is like a flame. A flame is burning, and if the flame is burning and you touch another uh, wick, that wick starts burning as well. That's what a flame is. That's chayus. This person touches another person, and he lights up. Uh, chayus is one who can light others up. Because Chaim means you're generating energy, you're self-generating. That's what Chaim means. And they don't need others. That doesn't mean they don't engage with others. It means they don't have neediness. There's a difference between need and neediness. And Suchim Lezulata means they are not needy of others. Of course we need others. We need each other. We can't function in isolation. But we're not needy of others. We can manage without. And that's the problem with poverty. Because with poverty you are dependent. So from his own perspective, his own independence is considered like a dead person. That's why it says, where the Torah says, you've got to give tzedakah to the poor person in your community. And it says, he will live through you. You will give him life. But he doesn't have life on his own. And that goes back to the Shir on Daf Kuf Yud, that one who despises handouts is truly alive. One who would rather live in, 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 with a small capability, financial capability, but it's his own, it's independent. A person that wants his own product, what he's able to produce. One who despises being dependent, living by the means of others. In that, in that case, he's got his own chayus. Because he's not taking it from anybody else. And then he goes on to say, and that's the same with the idea of a mayan. In the Hilchus Mikvos, we know that a spring is called mayim chayim. It has different laws of mikveh than a bor, a, a pit. If a pit is sealed and it's watertight and it has a certain amount of water, of natural water in it, that's a mikveh. But a spring is, even if it doesn't have that amount, even if it has very little water in it, it's still a kosher mikveh. Certainly for something that can, get, can fit to it, you want to table a teaspoon, you can ta table it in a very small little amount of water that is a maim, that is maim chayim maim chayim means it's a spring that, that sprouts off on, on, on its own and that's why it's called maim chayim and it's on the basis of that that, that the Shev Shmeitzer in his Akdoma, in his introduction, and we quoted that on Daf Kuf Yud, says that's the purpose of the whole world before we were brought into this world, Hashem gave us everything we had, our neshamas were supported by Hashem Hashem puts us in this world so that it won't be nama de kasufa, that what we earn in Olam Haba will be our own earning. We will have produced our own spirituality. We will have produced our own reward. It will be ours because we generated it. And this applies not only to the field of, of finance, to, to the question of money and, and generating wealth. That's part of it. There are two types of people. There are people who consume and there are people who generate. And there are moments when one is consuming and there are moments when one is generate. You are either a net generator or you're a net consumer in any given moment. Some people, that's their whole lives, they're net generators or they're net consumers. And there's some people at certain times, they're one or the, or the other. A Jew, what we're talking about here, chayus, being alive, having aliveness means you generate. You generate money, you add value, you build a business, you create value, that's generating. A person, a, a, he generates energy. He comes into a room and there's more energy in the room. There's some people, they walk into the room and you just, uh, they're able to suck the energy out of the room. So how do they do that? I don't even know how they do it. They suck the energy out of the room. Uh, I, I, I might have told you once that there was a, a woman in my community in South Africa who had a severe gynecological problem. And there was one gynecologist in Johannesburg who I thought could really help her. And I called him and I said, can you help this woman? He said, no. I said, what do you mean? No? He said, I've had her before and I, I, I got rid of her. I said, yeah, but she's, she needs you. There's nothing else. She's nobody else. He said, let me just tell you how I work. When 
if my phone rings and my secretary tells me it's Mrs. So-and-so on the line and I start shaking, I pick up the phone and fire her. I can't, I can't have such a patient. This is such a person. I, can't, I, I just can't work with it. There's some people, that, the, the, the interaction drains you of energy. And there's some people the interaction inspires you of energy. And it's got nothing to do with, with how much they've got or what. It's just got to do with, are you a, are you, do you have chayus? Are you alive or are you consume, or just a consumer? Are you sucking energy or are you creating energy? And the avoider is to be a creator of energy, to be a generator of energy in everything we do, because we do, because that's what chayus means. And if one isn't generating energy, that isn't human life. Then an oni choshev kames. Then one is an oni in that particular area. One is a poor person in that particular area. It's not just about money. Money is a form of energy. Money is an, money is an outcome of energy. Person is productive. They put their energy into production, into building a business. That energy translates into money. It's a form of energy. But that applies to all areas of energy. It applies in relationships, in a marriage. Or is one consuming energy from the marriage or are you adding energy into the marriage? It requires in, in friendships. It, it's in business deals. It's in learning with one another, in chavrusas, and sitting in a shear, and giving a shear. Are you sap, sapping energy or are you adding energy? And that becomes something that one needs to be, be very aware of so that when the rabbi... Uh, with, with oneself, just checking in with oneself all the time. What am I doing here? Am I consuming or am I contributing? Am I, make, am I adding value? Does it make any difference that I'm, that I'm here, that I'm present, that I'm in the minion davening? Am I adding energy to the minion or am I sapping energy from the minion? Am I adding energy to the shear or am I sapping energy from the shear? And it's not got nothing to do with physical activity. It's an inner state of being. If a person can have an inner state of being of contributing and a person can have an inner state of being of consuming, Two people can be sitting absolutely still, and one is an inspiration and one is a drain. It depends what's going on inside you. Is it important for you to be adding value, to be alive, to be stimulated and stimulating? And that's why Hidush is so important. That's why it's important to learn in a way where you're gaining new insights, deep insights, so that there can be some exciting excitement. You can have aha moments every day. You can have epiphanies every day because that's what energizes. You're just sitting back and you're reading and you're passive. There's no excitement in that. And that becomes really important. Dorosh Rabbi Pinchas Bachamor, Kashe and the Yut Betoch Beto Shal Adam, Yotermi Chamishim Makot. If a person, Chas Sholom, doesn't have aliveness, it's worse than 50 Makos, but you're still alive. If a person has, has money, he can get things done. Even if he's lying in bed terribly ill, he can get things done all over the world. He can change the world from his, from his sickbed. But if he's alive and he doesn't have the energy of money or other forms of energy, he might be alive and healthy. What can he do? What can he accomplish? So one has to firstly be very conscious of the bracha. That we, you know, Baruch Hashem, most, most people today in our circle certainly are wealthy. By wealthy, it doesn't mean that they can buy a yacht for themselves. But wealthy means they can go into the Makolet and they can afford what they need for the, for the home. That's wealth. Just the ability to do that, not being dependent, just being able to earn enough to be able to cover one's expenses. What a bracha that is, because that's aliveness. And with that aliveness, that's so much more important even than health. Rather be a sick person, God forbid, who's alive and generating and making a difference in the world than a healthy person who doesn't have chayus, who's a, a, a borek, who's just an empty pit, rather consuming, absorbing, rather than a, a be'er ma'im chayim, uh, rather than a well that is, that is generating. It's important for us to feel inspired and to inspire. It's important for us to have energy and to energize.